Welcome to Sales Velocity TV, where we pull back the curtain on how the top businesses in the world sell more with less resistance. Bringing over 50 plus years of combined sales experience and over 100 million in revenue generated, please welcome the hosts of Sales Velocity TV and two incredibly entertaining gentlemen, Andrew Cass and Aaron Parkinson. Hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of Sales Velocity TV and Radio. I'm Andrew, that's Aaron, and we're talking about authenticity in marketing today, which Aaron could not come at a more opportune, more timely time with the incredible breakdown in authenticity in, I guess, the media, in branding, within companies, political leaders, thought leaders, influencers. It's really tough to figure out who's the real deal today. And I think authenticity is about who's the real deal and who's showing up and delivering real information that is real impactful. And that is the topic of today. And we're going we're gonna to do something a little bit different today. We're going to share with you examples of leaders, thought leaders, CEOs, politicians, influencers who are absolutely killing it in business because of the level of authenticity and realness that they bring to the table. Yeah, I think it's going to be an interesting topic for today, and, and I want to make sure that we set the foundation for it, right? And and where the foundation of this this show came from this week was we were working with a client, and um, we were basically creating their social media content strategy with them. Mm -hmm. And um, this lady, she's British, um, very outspoken, uh, very opinionated. Uh, she said, you know, I tend to um, ruffle feathers. I tend to swear very like fairly often. Like where where should I tone this down? Should I like tone this down and come right into the middle when I'm making this kind of content? And I said, absolutely not. You, the the more authentic you are, the faster your following will grow, the more they will be interested in what you're offering, and you'll create a completely different type of customer. And the foundation for the show, when, when you're doing marketing for your business, the reality is, is that most industries, and I think you would agree, Andrew, um, they have very few outliers as far as like coming into the market with something completely unique. Yep. Yep. Right. And, and we have lots of people, you know, as members of our software pipeline pro is the example where we have a lot of financial planners. We have a lot of insurance agents. We have a lot of agencies. We have, a, there's a lot of trends, right? And so they tend to deliver a lot of similar services, right? So then where, where I think a lot of them drop the ball is they tend to try to just market on the merits of their features and benefits alone versus adding personality, a, a personality, an authentic, opinionated leader to their business, right? Because if you get this and, and you understand it at its core, people do business with people. And more importantly, they do business with people that they believe are essentially in the same tribe, right? We look at like, human evolution, right? We tended to surround ourselves with people like us from a, a tribal center because we felt safe, we felt protected, we felt like we could um, we could get things done, we could progress. So this is something that's actually hardwired into humans is to do business with people who are like ourselves, right? And, and, and I, think, I think an extension of that and, and, and that share the same philosophies and belief system as us. It's not just about, about likability. It's about they get me, I get them, we're on the same page, we have the same philosophies, we see things the same way. That's how you resonate with your customers. And I think a lot of business owners today are afraid to really let the public or the audience know who they really are. We have some great examples here in a minute, by the way, of, of, of people doing it right now and, and just letting it all hang out. And uh, because they're afraid of alienating or picking fights with some, but the best business models we've seen, and we, we're going to share probably 
of our list of seven, two or three of them, it has exponentially exploded the business because of the fact that they are so real and so authentic and they speak their minds probably more than anybody even says that they should. And that's what brings a rabid tribe to them. But it will absolutely alienate some. And if you're a business owner, entrepreneur, thought leader, and you are trying to please everybody and you're trying to not alienate anybody, you're going to have a very small following, unfortunately. And, and that's the key, the nature right? of and, the beast. And I reference, if you if you want to go more in depth on this, I reference Simon Sinek's Start With Why TED Talk a lot on this show. As he said, you know, facts and figures are cerebrum, right? When we talk about our features and benefits of our business, they're cerebrum. When we talk about the why, why I'm doing this, who it's for, what I'm trying to accomplish, you know, what the business stands for, then we move from cerebrum to limbic system. And limbic system is actually where buying comes from. It's where gut feeling comes from. It's where tribalness comes from. It's where uh, trust comes from, right? So when we see people being authentic and voicing their opinions on things, we automatically trust them more if, if we have the same belief systems. And then it becomes less about a transactional purchase mm -hmm. and more about a tribal purchase. And the difference between trying to market to everybody and trying to market to people who believe what you believe impacts the bottom line so heavily because when you when you can actually create a rabid customer list that is more tribal, they will come back to you and buy way more often and your lifetime value will be way higher than somebody who comes for a transactional purchase. Here's the extension of that. They won't shop you. They no. won't compare you. They won't price shop you. They won't look for better deals because you're the deal. You're the real deal. And authenticity in marketing is all about being real, not being afraid, not living in fear of offending someone, letting it all hang out, not trying to be politically correct all the time. And you are going to gain the audience that sticks with you the longest versus the audience that comes and goes. And that's the key to today. And we're going to talk about, I think the first big name that we want to talk about, you brought this up this morning when we were preparing for the show, is Elon Musk throwing stones as the CEO of the richest company in the world right now. It, by the way, is Tesla is Tesla a bigger market cap than Apple right now or no? Do you know? I don't know off the top of my head. I I, I think they flip flop. Okay. So let's say but. Tesla is the biggest market cap going right now. And you got probably the most controversial out there, authentic, like him or hate him. You don't get to like or hate here. This is his, that authenticity doesn't mean right or wrong. It means that's him being himself or that's her being herself. He's being himself. He's throwing stones. He's quick to attack the media. He's quick to take shots at the ridiculous public health measures we're seeing. He he's, he's attacking Justin day. Trudeau of Canada, who's a complete tyrant. He's, I'll say it like it is, and he'll, he'll throw stones. Now, most CEOs play it safe. Most CEOs pander, 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 pander. They pander to lowest common denominator. They pander to shareholders. He does not, by the way. He's the he first CEO older, in a long time, by the way, that is not pandering to shareholders to tell people what they want to hear. So here's the opposite of authenticity, fakeness, telling people what they want to hear just so that you can play it safe and just so that you can do what someone told you to do, aka the shareholders. That's what I call a fake CEO. There's a lot of fake CEOs out there. It's also fake leadership. It kind of pisses me off because it's the, it's the exact opposite of the authenticity that we're talking about here today. And the problem with it is you don't know if you can trust that dude because that dude is basically making up his, his narrative and his speeches and his wording based on what he's told to do. This is, this is how politics works, by the way. Parties tell people what to do. People don't get to be people. This is why I hate the Republican and the Democrat Party. Well, I don't want to even say equally at this point, and I won't get into politics, but it's, it's like the lesser of two evils with politics, but I don't like the fact that there's even a political system. I never loved the fact in America, really, I think this is in Canada too, you're Canadian, in which you have to like choose a party to associate with to vote. I would love it, and it's never going to happen. If people could run on their own principles and you voted for a person, not a party, right? That would be the most amazing thing that could ever happen, and it will never happen because there's too much money, too much politics, and too much conflicts of interest involved in it. But that would bring all of the politics and all of the lack of authenticity out of the conversation. And it would let people be people like Elon Musk is doing right now. 
By the way, Donald Trump tried it. I don't think it worked because I don't think you can pull it off at the level of being the president. We'll loop back to that. But Elon Musk, not to get off topic, is throwing stones. And I don't think he's taking a lot of heat from his shareholders, Aaron. He, he takes a lot more heat from his board. And there's been talks about him being removed. And 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 Oh, good luck with that. Yeah. The, and the reality is, is that that Tesla is just a car company, right? But we don't view Tesla the same way that we view Ford, true, 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 Chevy, Toyota. Those are nameless, faceless brands, right, to us, right? And it's because of Elon Musk that Tesla is more viewed like a religion. Its valuation has always been exponentially higher than what the mass says it oh, should. Oh, yeah, be. it's crazy because. It's consumers are not transactional. Mm -hmm. It's consumers are tribal. They're fans. They are uber fans of everything about They love the, the tech. Brand. They love him. They love the, the edginess of it, right? All of it. They love it all. It's a community. Right? And that's what's made it one of the world's most valuable companies yep. is because of its authenticity in its brand, which is very closely tied to him. So the other day, right, right. he he... He's a huge fan right now of the Canadian people shutting down the Capitol, protesting to have all mandates removed because he believes, like many, that. By the, the way, is he Canadian, supported. like you, or no? What's that? Is Elon Musk Canadian? Um, he actually is not. He's actually born in South Africa. He uh, grew up right. in Canada, and then he moved to the United States later on. So you could say he has Canadian ties, sure. right? Um, but he doesn't believe in the mandates. He's been very open about it, right? So with what the leader Trudeau is doing right now, he's been taking pot shots at Trudeau on his social media. One of the first things he did, which I la I actually laughed out loud uh, about three weeks ago, is he bought the domain liar.com. L-I-A-R.com was available? I, first off, it was not available. I don't know. Oh, he, he probably paid, paid a it. premium for it. He probably paid a few hundred thousand to yeah, a million no dollars, question. maybe more. Awesome. For it. Yeah, nice. But because he's got unlimited money, he's like, I don't care. So he bought liar.com and then he forwarded it to Justin Trudeau's Wikipedia page. That is incredible. <laughs> which is just <laughs> savage as all hell. Oh my right? gosh. So he's, yeah, he's going really deep. It's amazing. Yeah. You know, but the flip side is yesterday he posted a meme that had Hitler in it talking about Justin Trudeau. <clears throat> So he ruffled some feathers yesterday. Jewish community wasn't impressed, you know, so on and so forth. And he's like, hey, it's a joke. Get over it. Right. And the people that agree with Elon absolutely adore it. I'll give you another example. You'll you will laugh out loud when I say this. Right. <laughs> One of the big car companies on their Twitter, I think it was like Mercedes or something like that, said by. 2025, we will be the biggest electric car company in the world. He went on their Twitter and responded to their tweet, and all it said was, bring it, bitches. I heard about that. Yeah, right? I saw like, that. That thing. was a while ago. I did see CEOs that. CEOs don't do I those kind believe of it. things. Yeah. But I laughed out loud <laughs> when I saw it. I was like, this guy is, is hilarious. Yeah. Like he's a real human just speaking what's in his mind, being authentically who he is. Now, let, right. let, let me stop you for a minute now, okay? Because now what a lot of people would think right now wrongly is they'd go, oh my God, he should never do that. He's the CEO. That's bad Don't representation of the company, da, 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 da. And listen, maybe there's, there's, there's an argument for that. Maybe sometimes you can go over the edge. But again, it, it's not about right or wrong or what you think. It's about what's working. It's about results. And what's happening right now is because of that type of personality, authenticity, right? You might not like it, you might not agree with it, but he's just being him. He's being authentic, and that's what's causing rabid, fan-like, community-like buyers for a car company. And by the way, electric cars, they're becoming a commodity. Everybody's going electric right now, and Tesla's still operating as if they're the only game in town. Yeah, I mean, the original inventor of the, the electric car, I believe, was the scientist Tesla, right? I can't remember his, his first name, um, but electric cars have been around since the early 1900s, right? But I mean, the, 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 they really set the tone, right? And now you're seeing BMW and, and, and Audi his, and all the big names are, are going electric. He, he made it cool. Yeah, exactly. He made electric cars cool. Right. Even the design of the Cybertruck. I look at it, I hate it. Other people look at it, they love it, right? 
they didn't go down the middle on their design of the Cybertruck. They said, we're going to do something out there and we're not going to play the middle road game, right? It's just another example of how they do things, mm -hmm. right? Um, he's a great example of just being authentic has skyrocketed the value of the Tesla brand. And obviously his wealth corresponds with it. Yep. And I, and right? I, and I gotta, I gotta believe that Tesla is still going to do well. If Elon Musk was a quiet, I'll do whatever my shareholders say and be fake CEO. I still think Tesla would do well, but they wouldn't do this well. And that's the key. I don't think they'd be anywhere close. You don't think anywhere close really? Wow. Right now. No, Interesting. not anywhere so, close. So right? then what you're saying is that because of a really out there, authentic personality, chirping, talking, throwing shots, Tesla's actually making way more money as a result way of more. the personality. That's Listen, that's the point of the show then. This is a sales show. If we can show you things that can help you make more money, make more sales, but ultimately have more committed long-term buyers, that's the key to stability long-term, right? Then this right. is it, right? Tell me, this tell is me it. the name of one CEO of any other major car company. I can't. Of course you can't. Because they're playing... They're, They're playing, playing the, it safe. The, the safe game. Playing it safe. Right? Uh, being all politically correct. Saying Worry things they don't fired. really mean to appease a certain part of the population. It's, it's, it's like a playbook. It's so obvious. Right. And, and guess what? He's the biggest shareholder, right? So he has that security of he's, you know, he's the owner and the CEO, yeah, yeah. right? Which most of the people that we know or, or most of the people that listen to the show. Fully vested. They are fully vested in what they're doing. So they have the freedom to do that, where most of the other CEOs, they'd be fired because they're not the biggest shareholder. So let's talk right? about a few others. He's obviously the premier example right now. I'm looking at my list right now. Joe Rogan, obviously, is another. We did a whole show on Joe Rogan. Again, like him or hate him, doesn't make a difference. He's a disruptor, and he's willing to have the tough conversations. And again, it doesn't matter what you think. It got him a $100 million contract with Spotify, which, by the way, is now being doubled down by other characters. Spotify will fold. Actually, I'm not sure. I don't know the CEO if he's I weak yet. Either. It he's could go either way if he weakens and folds, right? If you fold because somebody has a viewpoint, you're weak. And the prediction is Spotify will fold, but Joe Rogan has a, a deal that's Two hundred million with I think uh, I can't remember Rumble I think I don't remember who it is Rumble's right thrown so the, the but at the end of the day it doesn't matter what you think right what matters is that people need to be able to speak right now that's a massive problem in society as a whole at least here in America Aaron you're not in America the censorship thing is a massive problem it's front and center it's black and white it's unarguable and it's absolutely fierce now guys like Joe Rogan and guys like um, Elon Musk they're just being themselves. They are perfectly fine with being themselves. They're perfectly fine with offending some, but you don't get to label them and name call them. You're weak if you do, right? They're just being them and they're not doing any damage. They're just being them. And what that's doing is it's causing their brands to grow exponentially. And that's really what this is all about now is how can we get your business and your brand to grow exponentially? It's going to require you being out there and you having a voice and an opinion and you being authentic, right? We're talking about transparency yep. and authenticity today. So Joe's another one. We did a whole Joe's episode on the Joe Rogan podcast. Again, from a business standpoint, how did he grow that podcast and that brand to the level that he did? Here's a piece of it here today. It's being authentic and staying consistent with that authenticity for a decade plus. That's how he did that. So we won't go into too much detail on Joe. Then there's Steve Jobs from back in the day, who was yep. really one of the early adopters of personalizing and humanizing a big company and not really... He was, listen, his, his board kicked him out of the company. So they Steve did. Jobs got booted out of Apple. So, and, and I think everybody knows that story. And they, they, they replaced him because of his non-politically correct stance. And he was throwing stones at Microsoft. Do you remember those cool commercials where like Microsoft was this nerdy guy and then they had like this cool hip upcoming guy? And they would talk about Microsoft versus Apple. It was almost like a Coke and Pepsi kind of a thing. That was all Steve Jobs was making. He was throwing stones. And he had his uniform. He would always show up on stage on, in, in black. And he would do product launches from stage, right? So he was doing things. He was a disruptor. He was doing things very different. And he was very obviously taking shots, mainly at Microsoft's operating system, because his was superior. I believe it is. Many do as well. But he was one of the early... Um, a one of the early disruptors when it comes to CEOs not being afraid to be themselves. Steve Jobs is a 
Perfect example. Right. Let's look at another example. You remember the the America's not America's Got Talent, but uh, X Factor and all these other shows. Yes. With Simon Cowell. Yes, Simon right? Cowell. Right. Simon Cowell. Right. No, nobody in the history of 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 mainstream media watched talent shows on television. Let's be honest. Before Simon Cowell, when was there ever a successful talent show? on television. There wasn't. Now there's been a whole bunch of them. America's Got yeah, Talent, yeah, yeah. X Factor, this, that, whatever, whatever. What did people turn in to watch? They turned in to watch what would Simon Cowell say? Because he was so authentic that when he loved something, he was like, that is brilliant. Well done. And when something was terrible, he would say that was absolute trash. <laughs> and People would be so authentic awkward. again. Huh? Yeah. It was so awkward in the beginning listening to him going, oh, these are artists. Like, you're going to crush their soul. You're going to make them feel bad, whatever. And he's like, you can't sing. You can't dance. You can't I do, do remember this. that now. You're, you're terrible. right. You should never come back here again. Right? Like, his authenticity is actually what drove that brand. And I don't know if you know about Simon Cowell, but he was living in his parents' basement when he was 40. I heard that story. And he was a billionaire. I don't think he's a billionaire. I think he's worth about 400 million by the time he was 50. All by just coming out and being his authentic self in this environment. You made me, I, I chuckled when you said Simon Cowell, he wasn't on my list, but you also made me add Mr. Wonderful from Shark Tank to my list because he does the same thing. And let me tell you about Mr. Wonderful, right? He says some pretty, pretty vile things. I don't agree with a lot of the things these guys say, right? And you don't have to. Like, I don't think, like he actually said on the show once, which kind of turned me off. Like someone turned down his deal and he's like, I'm out. You're dead to me. And I'm like, come on, man. Right. I mean, please. Right. But again, doesn't matter what you think. Authenticity. Here's what that has done for Mr. Wonderful. If you look at the five sharks on Shark Tank, Mr. Wonderful now has more endorsements. He's now a regular on CNBC, which is a channel I watch every morning, just, just basically economic and business news. He's on as a spokesperson giving stock advice. He's a spokesperson for at least three accounting companies and accounting softwares. That I know. Social All family. because he was the most controversial, authentic, right? Being himself on Shark Tank, throwing stones, exactly the blueprint of Simon Cowell. And it's got him the big endorsement deals, right? It's yeah, and let's it's be clear right here. there, the playbook. He's, he, he's not playing a character. That's how, that's he, how he is. is. Yeah, exactly. Right? That's how he now, is. Simon Cowell is not playing a character. That's who he is. Joe Rogan is not controversial and mean like Simon Cowell and Mr. Wonderful are. He's just a guy. He's a he's a he's a meathead, right? He does jujitsu. He works out. He's the UFC commentator. He he smokes weed on his show. He drinks beers on his show. You know, he, but but he's really good at just being open minded and asking questions. That's it. Right. Because he's a, an inquisitive guy. Yep. Right. So he's not. And, he, and by the way, Joe Rogan took a complete phony bad rap. Joe Rogan is not anyone's issue that has an issue with Joe Rogan. The issue from the media and from the big pharma tyrants is that Joe Rogan asked the tough questions that were not addressed early on when it came to this whole pandemic and the vaccine situation. He brought real doctors on who are frontline dealing with patients, part of the manufacturing process. And all they did was share their concerns about efficacy, testing, transparency, labeling, marketing, do no harm. All he did was ask questions. He does, if you watch it closely, he doesn't take stances. He just says, hey, this is something that's concerning me. What do you think? Why is this happening? Should right. this be happening? What is the solution to fix it? So, so don't let the media fool you with their little gaslighting that Joe Rogan's the problem. They're petrified of the doctors who did what, who spoke up and shared information that should have long been shared with the public just from an ethical standpoint. So Joe Rogan isn't the issue, not to, not to, to divert here by any means. It's his guests that you, if you have issues with his guests, go get them on a show, go hear their side, go have a conversation, go have a debate. That's what, that's how the world works. Otherwise it's propaganda. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, let's another let's look at another one. You got another one? We've got Dr. Jaquish. So we talk about this one a lot. I'm a big fan of Dr. John Jaquish, who is the inventor of the only fitness equipment I even use today for now a year and a half called the X3 Bar, which is really revolutionary. It's a, it's a heavy load variable resistance band system. Aaron, you use it periodically. I recommend it to you. I've been using it for 16 or 17 months, which means I don't do weights anymore. I do only these 
heavy loaded variable resistance bands with a titanium bar. And I, it's gotten me into the best shape of my life at 48, lowest body fat level I've ever had, highest muscle mass level I've ever had, immune system like a rock, um, really got me in good overall condition, not just from a muscle standpoint, but from, from an overall metabolic health standpoint. Now, what did he do? He basically launched a book and here, this will kill you. You, you, you already know the name of the book, so you won't laugh, but if you're hearing this for the first time, it will, if this isn't a pattern interrupt in a stone throw, I don't know what is. Why weightlifting is a waste of time. Title of the book. I was pissed off when I saw it. I'm in the gym since 14. So as I'm his audience, I'm a rabid weightlifter, never stopped strength training since I'm 14. Never really took a lot of time off. It's just part of who I am and what I do. And I'm like, wait a minute. So the weak mind would go, F him, insult him, screw him. I'm mad, I'm angry, I'm sad, um, and not read it. The inquisitive mind goes, what does he mean? And who is he? And he's a PhD scientist. He worked with Tony Robbins. They created the osteopro machine, which healed osteoporosis essentially in a clinic level. Like, why is he saying this? It's like kind of my feeling now with this whole censorship thing around when I'm seeing like really high credential doctors and nutritionists being censored around the public health thing. I'm not going, all right, good. They should be censored. I'm going, why are they censored? What are they saying? Is there merit for the I don't think there's merit for anybody being censored, but are they really causing problems or are they saying things that we should know? So same, same thing here. Read the book, watched a bunch of the videos, 200 plus third party scientific peer reviewed examples of how variable resistance training is superior to weight training on muscle gain, more so injury prevention, less on the joints, right? But what does he do? He absolutely annihilates weight trainer. He absolutely annihilates personal trainers. He actually goes crazy, big Facebook presence, huge Facebook group, fights all the time, kicking people out. Anybody says anything that goes against his, you know, his thought process, or if they start like trying to attack his company, he's like, sorry, you're not, you're not fit for this community. You're out, boots them out publicly. But again, controversy, authenticity, wasn't trying to play it safe, wasn't trying to make all the personal trainers like him, was going after strength and conditioning programs, um, talking about how they should be using this over weights. I mean, this is what Tom Brady's been doing for years, which is why he played till 44, which a lot of people don't know. He's a big user of this system, but he can't talk about it publicly because he doesn't have a deal. So it's all there, right? The blueprint is there. This guy's done a great job. You can just go Google X3 bar or Dr. John Jaquish. And you know, he just recently, I live in Miami. He just got the Miami Heat all in. I don't know if I told you this, Aaron. The Miami Heat removed all the weights from their weight room. The wow. Miami Heat had John come in for weeks and re retool the whole weight training program. The Miami Heat had they have a weight room, they have a weight center, they have a training center with no longer any weights, no dumbbells, barbells, nothing. It's all X3 systems now. So every single Miami Heat player is now training with this X3 bar variable resistance system. And he's working with a lot of NFL athletes and a lot of different players and just keeps going, keeps getting the celebrities, keeps talking crap about weights, keeps talking shit about how everybody has it backwards. And the company is so profitable right now and has so many rabid fans. It's incredible. It's the same formula that we're talking about here. Steve Jobs did it. Elon Musk look at is Dave doing Asprey. it, right? Look, look, look at Dave Asprey. Dave Asprey is doing it, which we'll talk about next, right? So... You know, they're not, and here's the thing that, that we'll probably never know, but at least I think, is they're not out there like acting and pretending and playing like, hey, I'm going to no. go like be fake and, and throw stones. Like this is how you can, we don't know for sure, but it seems like this is how they really feel. Well, they've been the they're, same way for a decade. Yeah, so there could be some people playing a show and acting and maybe doing it as a play. Who knows? For all we know, Elon Musk, maybe everything he's doing is strictly for attention. It's possible. Right. Again, right. again, don't have any emotional attachment to what's going on. Just just figure out how can I in my business as a thought leader, as an influencer, as an entrepreneur, how do I get myself out there more and just be me and stop worrying about offending every snowflake on the planet like we have on the planet today and see where that gets you. Yes, you'll lose some, but you'll gain more and you'll have them longer. Customers, clients. Yeah. And, and for me, I, I want to repel the people that I don't want to work with, right? I want to attract the people who believe what I believe because they're going to be a better customer for me. And I want to repel those who don't because typically they're a challenging 
customer for me. But if I, it's, I don't know if you remember that the movie, The Karate Kid. Yeah, of remember course. Remember the movie, The Karate Kid? Of course. Right? Big Karate Kid fan. So do you remember when Mr. Miyagi said, drive on left side safe, drive on right side safe, drive in middle of the road, squish like grape? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I always keep that in my mind, right? Is who who am I marketing to? What do they believe? What do I believe? What can I wrap my marketing around to ensure that we all feel like we're part of the same tribal ecosystem? And how can I repel a lot of that is by it's it's polarizing, right? How can I repel people who are not like me? Because typically they're my worst customers. And the mis- and the mistake that you'll make as a business owner is thinking that repelling certain people is a bad thing. It's not. It, it's, it's, when you get clear on that, it's the best thing. So ever. there's there, there there always has to be a mindset play, right? I, I, I've worked with a lot of novice business owners in addition to a lot of non-novice business owners, and the novice business owners all, always have a lot of mindset things they need to get get over. Right. And again, it's the political correctness. It's it's thinking that they need to please everybody. It's tiptoeing. It's playing it safe. It's worrying like these are all mindset things that need to be fixed. Otherwise, you don't really grow scale and become that noticeable and that relevant. And these are guys that that are that are knocking the cover off the ball. You mentioned Dave Asprey. That's another one who was the creator of Bulletproof Coffee, which really was just a concept of butter and MCT oil and coffee, and it really is just a phenomenal intermittent concoction. fasting. Yeah, intermittent fasting. He kind of put that on the map, and he's a controversial figure too, where he he goes against traditional health and wellness principles. Um, I've read all his books. I agree with just about everything he says. I can't really figure out anything I don't agree with, um, because he's an alternative medicine guy, right? He's the kind of guy who will basically. I'm the same way. I want I want to exhaust all natural health measures before I go medical before I go invasive, because as soon as I go medical invasive, I know that's going to come with a whole host of side effects. When I go natural, I'm not, I, my risk factor is essentially zero. And that's the game he's played for a while and he's getting censored. I think he got booted off Instagram for a video the other day. That's not normal guys, right? If, if somebody can't talk about the other side, it isn't science anymore. It's propaganda. If you can't have a conversation, it isn't science. It's the furthest thing from science. If the other side can't talk, it's just propaganda. And there's still, a, I think it's a small amount of people that don't see that, but it, it's definitely getting smaller. But Asprey's a guy who's thrown, throw, who's thrown stones as well. Um, the other one you mentioned is Jordan Peterson. I hear a lot about him lately. I don't know him that well, but he's a guy that is really getting some traction right now. Big, I mean, He's outspoken about big corporations and climate change and all this stuff. I don't know him as well as I think you do. Well, he's Canadian. He's a professor of psychology and um, I think at the University of Toronto. He's been doing a lot of live seminars and a lot of podcasts over the last couple of years. And he's got a lot of very strong opinions about a lot of very hot topic um, conversations. And he's got his training and his belief system to you know, make a point. Yeah. Right. And he's open to debating, you know, whether he's right or wrong with other psychologists, but he's, he's, I mean, he's, he's a smart guy. He's, he's been in the game a very long time. Yeah. I just wrote a book, and, 12 principles of life or something just came out. I forget the, the, the actual title all over the bookshelves. And this is a guy who's a psychologist teaching at a school and he's filling stadiums with 10,000. He was in Miami. He was in Miami. I had two friends invite me to go see him in Miami live. It was like on a Monday night. I wasn't available. Two different friends invited me to go see Jordan Peterson. I'm like, I keep hearing this name. I don't know him that well, but I'll look into him. Yeah. And he's talking a lot about like, you know, the, 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 the war against masculinism. Oh, geez. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the weird, you know, process of, genderism and a whole bunch. And he's got all these, he's, he's got all of these opinions and beliefs around them. And those who believe what he believed follow him like a zealot. And there's never been a psychologist that I know of other than maybe Dr. Phil, (laughs) you know, that's gathered such a strong tribal group. He's booked out to speak Andrew. Interesting. Once every two weeks live for the next two years. Interesting. And he's doing, and I asked one of my friends went, who's here in the office with me, and it was two hours of him alone. Yeah. I mean, I so that's, that's, a, that's I got to tell you from, you, you and I are, have vast speaking experience. 
to carry a stage for two hours by yourself. And I don't think he's got slides or anything like this. And I don't, I think he's just talking. He's just basically like watching a, you know, like watching a comedian up there, but talking about philosophy and concepts. And the guy that I know that went from my office, he said it was really good and really deep. Like he's a deep, deep thinker. I mean, he deep psychology stuff that most couldn't handle. He said, I brought a buddy with me that was completely on another level. He just couldn't hack it intelligence wise. And <laughs> so, so it's, 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 it's somebody that I want to look into for sure. But these are some big names we mentioned. I think we threw out six or seven names. There's more out there. I had another one that just came to mind, but I just, I just drew a blank here. Um, these are great people to study, like study how they blend their authenticity into their marketing, their, their marketing their and their business. And they build these tribal followers. Another one is, is a guy that, that you don't know, Andrew, but I've known him really well for the last couple of years. And most people won't know who he is, but his name is Ezra Firestone. Right? Yeah, I know who he is. Yeah. Um, and he built his brand boom by Cindy Joseph, um, with his partner, Cindy Joseph, who was the world's oldest supermodel. And they just came into the space basically saying, you know, and, and he does a much better job of explaining it than I do, that women over 50 are not ugly, right? And I don't think women over 50 are ugly, but there's this perception amongst society on women and men that after 50, like, women just aren't attractive anymore. And his whole brand with Cindy being the world's oldest supermodel and the content that they produced uh, both visually and emotionally and the copy and the whatever was they, they challenged the belief system yeah. that women over 50 can't be beautiful. Right. And, and so they were, they were very authentic in their messaging. And you talk about a difficult industry to crack we're talking about skin Ooh, cream? competition is brutal. Oh my gosh. Skin cream is like one of the most oversaturated marketplaces on the planet. Right. And I think he just exited boom last year. Um, and I think the valuation was somewhere close to 50 million on something that he started five years earlier. It's an interesting concept, because if you look at that approach, that was a different approach. It wasn't a stone throwing approach. It was more of a hopeful approach. Right. So it's but same thing. It's still controversy because yeah. who would think that I can still look attractive over 50? Man, that got my attention. Right. right. So really, at the end of the day, it's a sales show. How do you get more attention? You're going to do it by humanizing your sales process, which we talk about quite a bit. And how do you do that? You be yourself. You get out there. You let your personality show. You're not afraid to throw stones. You're not afraid to offend someone. Heck, in, at least in America, I don't know if this is the case around the world, Aaron. You Joe, you're, you're as close to America as I guess you can be because you have so many American friends and companies and kind of everything goes down here, but you're off skating around being a resident of, 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 of America. But we have become outright a snowflake nation. Everybody's offended by everything. Nobody, nobody, nobody likes to speak up anymore. You're either against this. You're either you, you get called a racist if you look at someone the wrong way. You get called a well, I don't even know some of the names. What, what's the the masochist or uh, it, Here, here's the er, thing. you just I get know, just I, everything's labels now. Like if I you be yourself, that, you get labeled, and it's just like God, just chill, right? Like, I God, think that grow up. Andy Andrews is one of my favorite um, authors of all time. He yeah, he spoke at one of our events back in the day. That's right. Yeah. He wrote a book called The Traveler's Gift, which is my favorite Great book ever. Book, if you've, if you've never read that book and you're listening to the show, go buy it. You'll thank me later. It's called The and Traveler's Gift, and it is great, and we're going to put it in the show notes. Perfect. Um, he said that the world is so starved for leadership that you could light yourself on fire and walk down the street, and people would follow you just to watch you burn. <laughs> Oh, and it's one of the, this, one of those quotes I could never get out of my head, right? Yeah. Is that there's this perception now because of how I think intermingled the media is and how it's wielded like a weapon. Yeah, for sure. That nobody wants to hear anybody's real opinion when I actually think it's completely the opposite. I think everybody's starving to hear authentic opinions. We're just... We just believe that that nobody does because we're the, the, the media is trying to brainwash us into this concept. And the reality is, is when we see personality driven businesses, um, they almost always outperform. Well, we can loop back to how we started the show as we end the show, right? What are two examples of what you just said? Elon Musk and Joe Rogan. They are two examples of, and all you need to do is look at the stats, right? At the end of the day, we're math guys. We look at data, we look at stats. If you look at 
And I, I pulled this up on a previous show. In fact, it was the show that we did the Joe Rogan podcast dissection. 4X multiple viewership, the Joe Rogan experience, than the highest rated primetime TV talk show, which at this time is Tucker Carlson's on Fox News. He, he beat it by, it was 11 million viewers versus 4.6 million viewers and everybody else was down on the ones and the twos, right? Yep. So again, that's just math. That's not opinion, that's just math. And this is a show about what works, what gets results. That's just math. Same with Elon Musk, the highest market cap of any company in the world. He's now the richest guy in the world. And you think he doesn't get there without being a really out front, heavy, controversial guy. I think the brand still does well. You think it doesn't do anywhere near as well if he's not the personality he There's is. There's no so chance. There's two perfect and, and we'll examples. And with like one last thing from him, and then and then we'll wrap up the show today. He was he was having a, a Twitter battle with Bernie Sanders. Oh, I caught that too. That was priceless. Right. And Bernie was saying some things and he was like joking back and forth with them. And then I think it was, I can't remember what foundation it was, came out and they took a shot at him. And they said, you know, these billionaires have so much money. If they just don't, if, if they just donated $5 billion total, we could end world hunger. And he said, okay, I don't believe you. <laughs> Show me the math that we could end world hunger. Crickets. Show me a proper PNL breakdown that we can end world hunger with $5 billion. There was no response back, standard. Shocker. But here's the thing. Two weeks ago, he liquidated $5.6 billion of his Tesla shares and donated it to an unknown charity. I think it's gonna be released in the next week or so. I think he may have donated it to a world hunger foundation because he said, if you can show me on paper your plan, I will write the check today. And everybody said, yeah, he's just full of, he's when just full you of shit. Start, he says, listen, yeah. when you start asking politicians to provide data and to provide proof, good luck. Right. That was and, a but, crickets question, but yet he still but, delivered. But he may have, because in, if you look at SEC filings, he just liquidated $5 billion that, dollars yeah. worth of shares and donated it to charity. Awesome. Which is insane. Which is great. Absolutely amazing right. to see. Now, will that solve the world hunger problem like Bernie Sanders said? Bernie Sanders, big propaganda machine, by the way. Right there, that's propaganda in the making. He's basically saying that this would solve world hunger. That's a, quite a statement to make without any backing, without any data to back it. But that's typical, poli pol that's typical political speak, right? But here's the thing. Like this guy said, if you can show me, I'll write the check. <laughs> he shows him and nothing. He just, and he just wrote a check. I mean, like, and you got a guy who's capable of writing a check. Why not show him like the next day? Talk about authentic and go and have a look and see how much how much media coverage that's getting right now. Yeah, it's almost yeah, yeah. next to nothing. It's the probably the world's largest charitable donation in history. But his wow. fans know, his fans know, and that's what matters. Yeah. Last thing I'll say is is Trump tried to pull this in office with the tweeting and this, and he tried. Listen, I always say, and I didn't even, I didn't even vote in the last election. I try to stay as independent as I can. Trump, I always say, was the right idea, but the wrong guy meaning non-politician, business owner, someone who's built companies, somebody who's been in the game, somebody who has come from Main Street, not legal law school, never worked a day in their life, politics, cushy salaries their whole life. So that was a good idea. And I think, that's open, I think that opens the door down the road for more good ideas. But I don't know that throwing stones and fighting with the media, I should say, I don't know, I know for a fact it doesn't work. Throwing stones, tweeting, fighting with the media, picking fights with the other side and not being more of a uniter, I think it backfired for Trump and I think it's why he didn't get elected again. I do too, but you could look at his fan base. His fan base oh, is yeah. very from rabid, it's Listen, very loyal. That's politics. So from a business, rabid follower, community, fan base, he's got that. And I think it works um, unbelievable in business. But when you get to the highest office in the land, I think it's great that you be yourself, but you're going to have to take a step back at times and be a uniter before yep. you be yourself too, too much, right? There's a fine yeah, line he, that he didn't know how to play. He, at that, at that role and in that job, you're right. Uniter is the right word. He was a little bit too antagonistic, yeah. too volatile, too emotional, and it, and it backfired. And it backfired um, because it, because had he, had he come to the middle and still been, Still been authentic, right? P purpose of the show. Still been authentic. And I love some things that he did. P Nobody called out China and some of the bad trade deals like Trump did, right? Nobody shored up law and order like Trump did, right? Like him or hate him. You just got to look at the results of stuff like that. But 
too much picking of the fight. Like you said, if he came to the middle more and actually demonstrated some of that. So instead of, instead of the Middle East was something else, the relations that were mended in the Middle East under Trump were people get too, they don't see it because they're too political. He did a really good job with that as well. But if he actually demonstrated to the other side, here's what I've done. Here's how I've mended fences. Here's how I'm uniting. Here's how I'm bringing the country together. It would have been a blowout in the in the second in the second round. But he was never able to have the down to earth uniting, real conversation. So I think his authentic his authenticity backfired because he became overly authentic. And I think at times he even got fake. I think he actually picked fights on purpose at times. And that now goes to the other level where that goes right. to you're doing it just now to do it. And now that's fake. Right. So right. like you and, look at and, Elon and Musk and, and you look at Joe Rogan, pretty much everything they're doing is coming from them. A lot of Trump stuff was really he was trying to be too much of a show. And now yeah. you 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 leapfrog authenticity and you do exactly what we're talking about not doing, which is being fake and doing things just because you want to get a rise. Yeah, it's just being fake and antagonistic. Right. Right. Let's wrap it up. There. All right, man. Good one today. Authenticity and marketing. We're not suggesting that you go out there and just start whipping stones at people. We're just basically challenging you to be you, to stand for what you believe in, to lead by example and not be afraid of offending everybody who looks at you the wrong way. Just be yourself, be your brand, do what you do, be you, do you. And I think you'll see a massive difference in your following, in your loyalty, repeat buyers, referrals, Right. But just again, don't think you're going to please everybody. You will offend some along the way when you get out there and you speak your mind and you you do you and you do your philosophy. So uh, good one here today. I'm Andrew. That's Aaron. We will see you on the next episode. Sales Velocity TV and radio, all past episodes, all replays, all podcast information is at salesvelocitytv.com. See you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Sales Velocity TV is powered by Pipeline Pro, the ultimate all-in-one sales pipeline management and marketing automation platform that makes all others obsolete. And we can prove it. Take a tour at gopipelinepro.com. See you on the next episode.